Hey, hey, what's up, Mike? How going? are you, bud? I'm doing well, Rich. How are you, sir? Yeah, not bad. Welcome to another episode of Gray Hair Garage. Welcome. Uh, this is part of that do-it-yourself uh, kind of episodes. And uh, so, what are we going to do today? We're going to change the drive shaft in my '16 Mustang. Oh, cool. So we're going from the two-piece to the one-piece, correct? Yeah. yeah. Cars developed a little dry, uh, vibration issue, and so we're going to correct that. And, cool. Uh, hope you learned something. All right. Well, we hope you enjoy the episode. We'll see you in a little bit. Yeah. See you soon. Gonna swap out the trap dry shaft now and so you're going to end up taking it loose from this joint here and on this particular exhaust system because it's aftermarket I don't have to take all the hangers off I just got to take the rear two hangers loose pull the whole thing back drop it pull it out and then we'll unbolt everything and put the new one in cool and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the new one um, what I like about it anyway okay we'll kind of compare the two once we get this one out Should theoretically. Straight back now. Alright, hold on. You go back forward. There you go. And then down. Okay. Okay. And how do you want to have it? Will it set off to the side? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll just leave it. That's there. less to do. Less to do. Alright. So this is the piece of junk I think Ford should have left out. They should have put a one-piece drive shaft. And the reason being is this little joker right here. This is a non-serviceable part. You can't even buy this part. So if you want to fix the drive shaft, you got two things. You either buy an OEM one that's going to do it again, or you go to the aftermarket. So I bought a dry, uh, Shaftmaster's one-piece drive shaft. And one thing I like about that drive shaft is it doesn't have an adapter for the transmission side. Uh, all the other ones do and to me that's just a complete waste but you see this little rubber donut looking deal there's six bolts total three on the drive shaft and three that go to the flange of the transmission that's a piece of junk too never have understood why they did, went to this uh, on my 14 or my 70 they got a four bolt flange like they used to have in the old days and um, you can't beat them but this is the reason see how much slop that's starting to fail. That's a lot of slop. Oh yeah, you can see it moving right in the carrier so bearing I've, right there. Yeah, so I've got a vibration that started in about 5,000 miles ago. I knew it was coming. And uh, rather than go to Ford and do the same thing over again, I went to Shaftmasters. And so let's go look at it. What I like about this, and I don't know if it's proprietary or, or not, but this is the transmission side. And somebody's taking the time to actually machine this piece. I mean, it's nice. There's no adapter place. This bolts straight up to the end of the transmission. It's bushed with steel sleeves. The bolts fit tight. You got standard um, U-joints, just like the old days. Uh, they're not greasable, but the, kind of the, probably the reason they're not greasable is the strength part of it. When you grease them, you got holes in them. Right. That that reduces. But your they strength. are replaceable, replaceable, as you can see. You got the clip right here. Yeah. So it is a serviceable unit. And same on the rear. You got your little spline that slides in and out. Not so much uh, for actual axle movement on this particular. You have to get it in somehow. So that's how they do it. But uh, because it's a it's a uh, independent rear suspension. The rear axle or the rear chunk is stationary. stationary so yeah. It's not moving like the earlier cars. The right. 197s and earlier. So it's got a nice steel piece. Again, another U-joint. non-greasable, but that's all for strength. But uh, you can service this, this this axle. But I don't, I mean this drive shaft, but I don't ever expect to have to do anything once I install it. Right. Sure. And the other cool thing is it comes with all the bolts, Loctite. 
And they actually even throw in a socket, not that I needed it, but it's, it's nice that they give you everything in the kit. But that socket is a 10 mil socket, and we all know what socket's going to go missing? That's the one. The 10 mil. So it comes with instructions, and basically all it is is remove the old one, clean the threads up on the, uh, the uh, pinion flange, and uh, bolt, bolt it up, and put some Loctite, torque it up, and you're done. Right. So Cool. Get them all, or you need it moved a little bit more. Oh. Uh, That's crazy how much. We'll leave that one in just a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. On to the front. Yeah. Need me to rotate? Oh. Uh, uh, we've come off the filter here. Well, I know what the problem is. The rear axle's not rotating. Go well, ahead, here. take. Go ahead, take. Oh, out. Okay. You just let it hang. Yeah. yeah. I'll, su I'll support that as you need to rotate it. It worked right there. Okay, that's all three. Now, you have, do you have to undo the other ones, or are they strictly should, mounted on that thing? Should be strictly mounted on the... Okay, well, if you want to undo these, we drop the uh, drive shaft. Yeah, there. drop the drive shaft. They didn't want anything to come out. Recording now. Recording now. Okay, all right. Let's take it over here. Ford junk. Should have put one of these in. I mean, it's, that's just, this is just stupid. A lot of monkey motion that's not necessary. I get people like cars that are, you know, the, the MBH is low on them. I get it. But when you have to replace this at 60,000 miles, there's a problem. And especially if you can't service it. So I recommend to anybody out there that's got one of these S550s or even 197s with a two-piece drive shaft, go to Shaft Masters, get their good one. Spend the money and be done with it. And this right here is the Achilles heel. That's the problem right there. That sucker is... And you can't service it. You know, some of the other cars, you can take a bolt out of this yoke and unpress it, change it, put another one. Right. But you can't do anything with it. It's not serviceable. So you have to buy the whole drive shaft. Yep. It's $720, $730. So whoever at Ford installed the drive shaft, they put an excessive amount of Loctite on it. They weren't, the bolts were not going to back out, that's for sure. So what's cool about that kit from Shaft Masters, it comes with a tap. So you'll want to clean these threads out. There's six bolt holes. Clean those threads out. And then also take a wire wheel and just go through and just fill the flange. Make sure everything's flat. There's no nicks. There shouldn't be because this is all new, just freshly torn apart. So, But you want to clean the surfaces up. Make sure everything's good. Same with the drive shaft. And then you'll put the, the uh, transmission side of the drive shaft in, bolt it up, and then you'll throw the axle side in and then just torque it up and you'll be done. So you just, you just clamp it up and just run it real slow. See how it's slipping? And you just run it back and forth. Take your time with this, people. Clean it out. Unscrew it. Run it by hand. Get it started again. Chuck it up. And just run it. Now, I tell you how much stress when you use one of these wire wheels to clean up this area. There's some safety glasses. Those little things will pop out, and next thing you know, you're at the hospital. So you just, just want to. Uh, 
cleaning up the surface. Yeah. This one's clean, as you can see, but I'm just knocking out the heavy right around this this area here, this flange, because it's got a lip that pumps this way. Then we'll just do the same on the uh, drive shaft. Okay. So it's got a little recess here. You see three of them in this flange. So I did, the reason I said that, so we cleaned up this space here so there's no rust or any surface defects on the flange. So we'll go over here and look at the dry shaft and I'll show you why I showed you that. See the, see the inserts, the bushings, the metal bushings that they inserted into the aluminum flange? Those, re, those pump outs or whatever, you see, steps on this flange will fit in the flange tram. And it's also got the recess cut in the middle for the bolt. You can't see how that goes up in there. If you right. saw the flange, there's a stud that sticks way out. So it all fits up nice. Yeah, go back. Go, get, no, let, don't try to put it in. We'll, oh, we'll oh that's go. right. We got it. All right. Let's get up and over. Here we go. Now. Just a second. There we go. Sweet. Now you said this thing slides out a little bit, right? Yeah, it should push out. Okay. It's Might need to just grab another bolt. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. All right, grab another bolt there. That's a nice kit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah There's a little saying. So these are uh, 12 points. 12 point, 10 mil. Yeah, and so you'll have to pull it up evenly because it's a tight fit. Yeah. No, you don't want to get it caught. No, right? no. So, it, yeah, and I think you can still rotate it. So, we'll just pull it up little okay. by little. Yeah. Oh, I like the look of that. Yeah, it's a whole lot nicer. And like I said, your, your rear end's not moving around. So. Right, no, it's I, IRS, so independent rear suspension. Yeah. So, the rear end actually stays put and the rest of it moves. That's what's nice about it. It's one of the things I like about that. So, Let's see if that helps. Yeah, that just seated a little bit better there. They get tight though once you're obviously yeah. getting in there. Yeah, it's a nice dry shaft. Okay. Um, Alright, I'm going to drop it down so I can... Okay. That one is it. It's getting locked up early. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like that. It's pulling up nice. And it started to get tough. Yeah. Oops, trying to go. I think we do. Still. Freaking, oh, it looks like you're closer. Are you still feeling kind of crappy? It is feeling crappy. Oh, 
The other two are doing fine, you yeah. know. took them and I cut them cut them down I had to add uh, a 16th inch washer so the thread bolt threads wouldn't bottom out in the flange but uh, yeah it torqued up fine everything's good to go good and tight um, very pleased with the whole thing and uh, so yeah we'll have to get with you later and see how it works out Well, we hope you enjoyed the uh, episode on the drive shaft. It was a little different, and I don't think there's a ton of videos on that, on changing from the two piece to the mm -hmm. one piece. Uh, and as you saw, sometimes you have issues when you do a job like that that you don't plan on. You just kind of got to power through it and uh, figure it out. Exactly. And uh, yeah, it can be. Turn wrenches. But you know, that's part of turning wrenches too. Uh, Man, every time you do a job, there's always a little bit of aggro involved with it. Yeah, you, you think it's going to be a simple deal. And it, yeah, even the simplest deals become yeah, a yeah. pain in the butt sometimes. Yeah, but we, we got through it. Yeah, got through it. And now you got a pretty good driving vehicle, and you don't have that vibration anymore. No, well. But you want to, you had a little bit of an issue afterwards that you had to correct, right? Yeah, I drove it for a week, and um, by 80, it had a, a vibration kicking in, so... I came back and checked the transmission angle versus the rear diff angle and, and noticed it was uh, about three quarter of a degree difference and you want a half a degree difference or less. Right. The, the closer you can get it, the better yeah. it is, but at least a half a degree or less. Because you're canceling a harmonic yeah. imbalance because yeah. you want both your U joints basically at the same angle. Yeah, you want them opposing each other. Yeah, you, right. You got three degrees down, you want three degrees up. You want them posing you don't want them like this you don't want them like this you want them yes parallel or if it's right up, so if the transmission's down this one's you down. want the, the rear they, end up they cancel each other yeah. just think of it like a parallel but on the 16 the rear end is fixed so you really can only adjust the transmission yeah. side on uh, this 15 and up right so uh, mustangs because they're uh, independent rear suspension now correct so what i ended up doing was i actually shinned the whole aluminum mount down which brought the whole rear uh, the okay. transmission down whereas if I had to go the opposite way I would have had to put shims between the transmission isolator mount yeah. and the aluminum mount and shim it up okay so you, you, you can do it right. it's uh, you don't have too much room to play with right. um, and there's a lot of information on the internet about getting the angle of the drive shaft correct for that reason very important you do that yeah. you know, so. and it's a lot so that's something a lot of people don't think about you know, they just put them in or they drop and, and lower the cars and they never think about drive well, yeah, drive shaft angles and you have to think yeah, about you, things like that you lower a car you, you change stuff everything gets affected it, too it yeah those change right so yeah. anyways we hope you got something out of that uh, video something a little different and uh, a little more of uh, the do-it-yourself stuff Yep. that we want to kind of go in that direction now 
we're hoping to uh, continue on with that with some other cards too. And uh, just hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Oh, don't forget that little notification bell. bell. Yep. Ring that bell, baby. Yep, exactly. Cheers, Mike. Cheers, brother. Good day of work. Yep. See you guys.